Excellent. Oh, unsupported. Uh, welcome everyone to the webinar. We're gonna get started momentarily. My Facebook stream gave me an error message, but it says it's streaming. So hopefully it's just lying to me. I think so. Okay, awesome. Well, we'll just go ahead and share our page while we wait for a couple of people to join us and then we'll keep moving. Okay. So I'm going to change that really fast so you can't see my screen. Oops. Okay. I think we have more people joining us. And then we're waiting on a couple more of our panelists to join us, but they'll be joining for their spot. I don't have any uh, specific guests outside of Skystar this time, which is pretty unique, different from normal. I have the whole team on today. Okay, cool. Oh, awesome. Hi, darling. Alrighty. Okay, let me reshare my screen. I need to do the background like you all have. It looks so good. <laughs> Got our fancy backgrounds. We uh, What's the, I want to say like branded backgrounds. <laughs> it's great. We're not the brand. Um, all right, well, we'll get started, I think. Yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, okay, well, welcome everyone. So today we're doing another SciStar Live as usual every week at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, this time around though, we don't have a project leader guest. We have instead all of us as the guests to talk through a lot of the, or all the resources that we can, um, that we have access to to support all volunteers, facilitators, project leaders um, at all levels, um, anyone to be involved there. So we'll talk through all the resources. If there are any questions, you can drop them in the chat at any time or the Q&A and we will get to them. Um, if not during, then by the end when we get to the Q&A portion. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So there's a lot of us here today. <laughs> uh, so my name is Emma Giles. I'm a program coordinator for SciStarter. I also am a, an, uh, a SciStarter fellow over at Arizona State University. Um, I do wanna mention Caroline is going to be here. Uh, she will be hopping on uh, closer to her time to speak. She's an advisor for, uh, for SciStarter and is also working on her PhD, which is why she's not here at this exact moment. So uh, Darlene, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, um, Darlene Cavalier. I'm the founder of SciStarter and a professor of practice at Arizona State University. Thanks for joining us. Roland, would you? Yes, thank you. I'm Roland, Quality Assurance Coordinator for SciStarter. And today we're going to talk about our favorite features on the platform. Excellent. And then Trevor, go ahead. Hi, everybody. I'm Trevor. Um, I'm the Content and Program Coordinator over here at SciStarter. And I'm happy to be discussing um, our favorite resources today um, and, and all the resources that SciStarter has to offer. So looking forward to the discussion. Awesome. All right, uh, just some housekeeping before we keep going. Since it's a webinar, you have both the chat function and the um, q and I talked about it briefly. Again, if you have questions about any of the resources, you can drop them in the Q&A or the chat. We'll look at both. Um, any things to share about your experiences using these resources, please use the chat. Um, that way everyone can see it um, at every moment. And if you'd like to test out your ability to use the chat, go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat with your name and location. So for example, I am Emma streaming or Zooming from Phoenix, Arizona, where it's kind of cold. <laughs> Comparatively, I don't know, we're wimps over here in Arizona. We cannot handle the cold. All right, we'll keep moving. Um, so as people are adding in where they're from, oh, awesome. Hello. Also cold. <laughs> Probably cold over there, darling. <laughs> it's like 60 here and I'm just it's not, yeah, it's okay. Um, in any case, so we wanna know who we're talking to and that means we'd like you to answer a couple polls. So the first one is, have you ever participated in a citizen science project before? So are you looking, working with um, more familiar citizen scientists or people who have not? <laughs> Don't know. Okay, we got 40% of you participating. We need a couple more of you. I'll give you a couple seconds like to get 80% if we can. Well, okay. 
Awesome. All right. Well, it looks like we've been to, or we've tried a uh, citizen science project before, which is awesome. What about been to one of our live events before? So if you've been to any of these events, we'd love to hear about it. Got a no. Got some split answers here. Uh, Roland just dropped into the chat the blog post that we have that keeps everyone up to date on what's happening with the live webinar. So if you ever need that update, you can uh, flag that URL um, and bookmark it actually, and then you can always check in to see what's going on. Awesome. Okay, so it looks like the majority of us have not been here before. So welcome, happy to have you here. Uh, and then lastly, just to check in on what type of individuals we're talking to. Are we aspiring citizen scientists? Are we parents? Are we teachers? Are we librarians? Are we bored people on the internet? Always at least one. <laughs> All the good different types of people, project leaders or researchers. Okay, got parents, educators, and citizen scientists. Awesome. Maybe in the future, some of you will be librarians or researchers, who knows, right? Awesome. Okay, cool. All right, I'll keep this moving. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, just to give you a blanket definition of what citizen science is. Uh, it's a collaboration between scientists and those of us who are curious, concerned, and motivated to make a difference. It's how people can make an impact on issues they care about and help science. It's all about using science to actually push research forward. So instead of just doing a baking soda volcano, why not report on something that's really useful for researchers out in the field, since, uh, such as like taking a picture of an animal and sending it on to biodiversity research. So all of this is about making a real impact beyond the classroom, beyond the small science project that you can do at home. Awesome. Okay, we will talk about a bunch of resources. Uh, so because we're talking about all of SciStarter, the main idea is that SciStarter is a very large database and hub of all citizen science projects that we can get access to to put onto the um, onto the site uh, to help you actually access all these different projects. So if you're familiar with that already, that's awesome. Um, but that is only step one of the many, many things we have available to you. So as we move forward, we are going to talk about the training um, beyond um, what I usually do right here. So there is training for citizen scientists on SciStarter, and we're going to talk about how it's particularly impactful for those who are not just looking at SciStarter, but also maybe you're a project leader, maybe you're a facilitator, maybe you are um, just a citizen scientist trying to um, get even better at uh, the work that you do. So we will come back to the training after, but as you may already know, uh, there are many trainings that we have. So after you've done the foundations training that teaches you about what citizen science is, how to get involved, there are several more to talk through building data literacy. If you're a librarian or work with libraries, that one's very useful for understanding what resources are available to them. Teaching in higher education and data ethics for practitioners are, can't say that word, practitioners are all involved, are all included in here. Awesome, accessible. Okay, so uh, we'll get back to training in a bit, but before we do that, we're actually gonna talk through project leader resources. So I'm gonna hand it over to Darlene to take it over. Thank you, Emma, and thank you for everybody who tuned in. Um, so if you're a project leader, I, I wanted to highlight some tools that I thought were pretty cool for project leaders. So that could be a scientist, that could be a um, community member who's interested in working with others to gather data. Maybe you're curious or concerned about something and you need to crowdsource efforts to collect enough data to make sense of that question that you have. Mostly these are for, um, scientists who lead citizen science projects. And so thousands of them um, are invited to add their project to SciStarter. And so the way that they do that is this very first link that I have up there, scistarter.org forward slash add hyphen project. And the reason why there's a hyphen there is because you can add a project, you can add an event. So if you have an event coming up, especially in April, which is citizen science month, this is, a, this is the place to add it. And all of this is free, thanks to support from the National Science Foundation. We're out, able to build and support these digital tools. And then also you can add a tool or a low cost instrument that might be needed in order to do your project. That might be an air quality sensor or um, something cool like, a, I don't know, a low cost telescope or something. Lots of different tools are added too, but mainly it's the project. That's where everything starts from. In order for us to be able to help share opportunities for people to get involved in projects, they actually have to be in the database. That's what makes us different than Google. These are all very um, standardized in their approach. And we ask information like, 
um, you know, what are the, what's the goal? What's the task? Give us a brief description of what you're asking people to do and why, why should it matter? We, we ask for things like topics. Um, so you can search for things by topic. You can search for things by um, related activities because that project leader has added that information. That That's what makes it possible for you to search for things like, show me what I can do, um, you know, during a walk in the park or while I'm at the beach. All of that is because of that ad project database. And also it's near and dear to me because that's how SciStarters started. It was just a simple database where I, I was adding projects and events, um, looking for all the different ways that I personally, somebody without a formal science degree, could get involved in science that mattered to me. So that simple tool is always going to be among my favorites there. Another one is a project dashboard. And again, this is again for the project leaders, but this helps somebody who added their project to SciStarter get a better snapshot of not only people involved in their project because they can see that on their own website, but also just relatively how many people, what kind of people, um, what's the stickiness? So how, how frequently are people involved in projects? This is information a project leader can get from their dashboard. I'm actually going to see if um, Emma might be able to share her screen if you have a dashboard open for a project. Absolutely. This is for a stream selfie, which you should be able to see. Oh, it's going to the wrong screen. Oh, there we go. Is that working? Yep. So Emma mentioned um, stream selfie. Very simple project. You can get involved in by going to the nearest stream and taking a picture of yourself and maybe your sweet dog there. That basically is because it's fun, but also that information that's picked up in that picture and through your camera or your smartphone gets relayed over to this project. And you're actually helping to create um, the first national map of streams, which is really important because something like a third of our drinking water comes through streams. We want to know where they are and we want to know that they're clean. In order to know that if they're clean, basically monitoring the quality of that stream, we do need to know where they are. So by building this map, it allows us to know where, where streams are, but also um, for those who are interested, they can take it a couple steps further. This is from the Isaac Walton League of America. They then offer services, free tools, free trainings for people to do regular or ongoing and persistent um, uh, monitoring of that stream. Um, so we, we love this project for a lot of reasons. All the information is openly available on a map so others can use it. Um, and there are very simple questions too. Like you, you talk about whether or not the path to get to that stream, if you happen to know if it's public or private. Um, on a range, you're asked about the, the cleanliness of this. How much trash did you see while you were there? So we do love this project. So we'll go back. If you were the project leader of this project, you would go and maybe look at maybe data. Actually, where, oh, where did you first have us, Emma? Sorry, this one takes a while to load because it's retrieving a lot of data. You can go to stats to look oh. at that <laughs> instead. <laughs> we'll look at stats. And so this is, you know, for projects, you can see the project leader will be able to get a snapshot of how many people visited that page, you know, in the past, however much time. Um, how many people saved it? How many people joined it? So it gives you all of this information, which I just think is very helpful um, for a project leader. Okay, let's get back. And again, all these tools are free. Let's get back to the slides. In essence, you have a lot of free tools if you're a project leader on your dashboard for SciStarter once you add your project. And then let's see, we'll pull up the... There we go. Uh, it should be loading. Okay, another one is related to that. So we went through the add a project. Then we looked at the dashboards and then the API. So this page is, um, and I can't remember what API stands for. Does anybody remember? Um, application program interface. Thank you, Caroline, and welcome. Um, API is basically our way of saying code that shares information between different websites. So for us, this is what makes SciStarter more than just a clearinghouse of projects that you can find, which would have been, frankly, good enough. That, that was incredible that we were able to provide that level of service, frankly. <laughs> but the APIs, again, supported by the National Science Foundation, 
enable project leaders, hundreds of projects to be able to report back to SciStarter when a SciStarter member, that's somebody who has an account, is contributing data to that project, which is really helpful for an individual an individual participant to keep track of all the things that you know, you're involved in across websites and apps and so forth. But it's also very helpful to measure collective impact. So you can imagine a school teacher who assigns multiple projects. She's able to then see across those projects um, when assign an assignment has been completed because those tools report back to us. But also we can measure collective impact. This is how we know during Citizen Science Month, people in April again, uh, people who are involved in these projects that use the APIs, we call them affiliates, we can have big numbers at the end of that because we actually have the data. We can say, you know, 365,000 data points were submitted during Citizen Science Month because of those APIs. So the last one is SciStarter.org forward slash research. And so thank you for this talented team here who helped develop um, the content for that page and Roland who created the page. This is actually, and maybe Emma, you can pull this page up, SciStarter.org research into a screen share. This is um, just to show you all the different papers that have been published um, by researchers who use SciStarter as their main source of data. And so we've been able to help advance research in the field of um, science learning and engagement. We get a good um, viewpoints of social media and social network analysis. You can, you can see them all there. You can click on them and learn from what we're learning. We, we pay attention to this research too. It helps us make the platform better, better for participants, better for project leaders, and better for practitioners and researchers too. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Excellent. Okay, let me pause the screen share. Don't know if I'm, oh no, I know. Okay, cool. I thought I might be muted that entire time. Um, awesome. And then Caroline, thank you so much for joining us. That is perfect timing too, because then we're gonna swap over to the resources for facilitators. Thanks Darlene for all the information about project leaders and take it away. Yeah, this is awesome. And I'm really glad that Darlene just mentioned the API because um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but one of my resources um, that I often email to people when they ask for it or write down on business cards and hand to people or however people are, I'm communicating with someone is the affiliates page. Um, because those are projects that use the API and are, um, I always phrase it as they've gone the extra mile um, because they put forth the effort to be part of this mission to assess collective impact. And that, that means a lot, right? Like they want to be part of this enterprise where we can say, okay, like we as a community accomplish this much in terms of data contributions. Um, it also shows that they care about your experience because like it's really impactful um, for individuals um, to be able to say, oh, wow, this year I contributed, you know, 80 contributions across five projects or something like that. Um, and like Darlene said, it's really important for the programs we do. So if we work with the Girl Scouts or we work with a library, or we work with Verizon or any sort of organization group entity, it's important for them for the different projects that they select to be able to see how much they actually accomplished as a group. And the affiliate program allows us to do that. So it's great for individuals, it's great for organizations, and it's great for the world, um, for the whole community of citizen science. So if you wanna find awesome affiliates, um, the SciStarter affiliates page is um, a great place to start. It's, we've made like special resources for them there. Um, and it's just a fun, a fun way to use your SciStarter account um, and to pick projects for your community to do if you're a facilitator. The People Finder, so there are a few different ways you can use it. Um, if you're planning an event, I often use the People Finder. So you just go to SciStarter.org forward slash people dash finder. And that's after you've added your event to SciStarter. So you go to SciStarter.org forward slash add. You add your webinar or in-person event, your library or whatever it happens to be. Yeah, the size. You can even if you even have a book display at your library, add it to Size Starter, especially during April Citizen Science Month, so we can brag about it, celebrate you, support you, uh, put you as part of our assessment of global impact for Citizen Science Month. All of that is great. But anyway, so you've added your thing. So you've already gone to SciStarter.org forward slash add. You've added your event, um, and then you use that People Finder. So SciStarter.org forward slash people dash finder. Um, and you can, if you, let's say you're planning an event at your local library and you'd really love a project leader who's in your area to come speak. Um, you can use the people finder to just message project leaders near you. 
and you could, and then I, I know, um, I did that. I was planning an event with a group in Oklahoma and they wanted to find an awesome Oklahoma project leader. And that's how we found Blue Thumb. Blue Thumb is an Oklahoma based water quality monitoring project. They're only in Oklahoma. They have their project size starter and the people finder allowed that local group to get in touch with them. Um, but if you're planning an event, you can also use the people finder to message everybody in your area and invite them in your area and invite them, whether it's online, in person or a hybrid of the two. Um, then once you've planned your event, you can use our resources page. Um, it's in progress, the Citizen Science Month resources page. We're building it in real time, so bear with us. Maybe check it in a few days or so. Um, but these are awesome resources like bookmarks, book lists, you know, things you could print, social media tiles you can use online, just different ideas for you if you're planning an event. Um, if you want to do a star party and awesome citizen science projects, you can include in a star party. And we often target a lot of these efforts toward April. April is just our excuse to party. It's um, the, the citizen science Super Bowl, as I sometimes call it, but all month long, it's just an excuse to do additional citizen science events and really get out there and get your community involved. And hopefully it jumpstarts impact year round, you know, doing events year round. But April, if you're looking for a reason to do something, April's it. Um, so use your citizen science month resources, organize something in April, print some stuff out, use some online resources, however you want to do it. Um, we're here to support you. And if you email us at info at scistarter.org, I'm always happy to hop on a call with you, give you some advice. Um, I do that a lot just for fun because, um, I'm really passionate about this stuff and I'm really excited for the global community and what's coming up for citizen science month. I also want to include our education page and our training page. Definitely use these year round. The education page, I know um, some of you may be facilitating events for different age levels. Um, a lot of these projects you can do with any age level. Like I've done the Great Sunflower Project with retirees before, right? People, grandmas and grandpas. Or I've also done it with working professionals at Verizon. But you can do the Great Sunflower Project with kindergartners and they'll get a lot out of it too because the only skill you really need is to be able to count. You have to be able to count the number of pollinators that visit a flowering plant. Um, so the education page sorts all these different projects by skill level. So the Great Sunflower Project is in the pre-K level because it's pre-K enough, right? If you can count, you can do this project and you can monitor pollinators. Um, and the, there are so many more projects on the education page. So if you're facilitating events for different ages, Education Place is a great stop on your journey. Um, the training page is also a really good resource. Um, there are all sorts of different trainings now, but I would start with the foundations. Um, this is a great one to do with people of all ages as well. Um, I, I think the youngest I've done it with is like middle school, um, but it walks people through the, you know, the who, what, when, where, how of citizen science. It teaches them the skills they need to really make the most of their experience. And you get a badge at the end. That's bragging rights on LinkedIn. That's a certificate you can use. And there are also facilitator slides and a facilitator's guide that can really help you make the most of this training for your community. Um, I like the training because I think it's a way to give back to the citizen science community. It's a credential. Um, it's um, a recognition that you're giving your awesome community members who are getting involved in these things. Um, and it's also, it's designed to be fun and engaging. I really enjoyed doing it. Um, and I think you will too. So if you use any of these resources, get in, get in touch with us, let us know how it went. And thanks so much for making a difference with citizen science. I appreciate you all. Awesome. Thank you so much, Caroline. Um, and I'm actually, before we move on, I'm just going to go ahead and switch the screen share so that it can, we can see some of the uh, things that you just spoke through. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. The other one playing like, uh, I want to say the word hopscotch between things. <laughs> see how it goes. Uh, okay. Loading and screen sharing. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right. So the first one that you mentioned was people finder. So this is an example of that. So I could just scroll anywhere. See, I go to Florida. Go hang out with uh, with Caroline over there, and then click on a random area, and I can see um, the amount of people who have accounts and how many project owners exist in that area, and I can contact them um, to their site starter message box. So uh, very helpful there. We have the resources for librarians. So if you're facilitating something out of a library or have an event at a library, this is where those things, uh, those resources uh, live, and you can find a lot of them there. So you can scroll through and see all kinds of um, items like kit building guides, promotional resources, online training, um, the library training specifically, guides to citizen science, um, et cetera. So lots of items in here. And then you also spoke about the Citizen Science Month page for resources. Again, yes, it is being, it's actively being worked on. So um, it will continue to be wonderful and grow. And so this is already what it looks like, even though 
um, we're still in process, right? Uh, the affiliate page that has been mentioned twice already, just to give you a good look at it, this is what you will see when you look up scistar.org slash affiliates. Um, and you'll see the training there as well, as uh, and then a ton of different projects that are featured here. If you don't find the project you're looking for, there is a keyword search, and you can also um, look at the advanced search. So look at the project finder here and just add in the, make sure it's a SciStarter affiliate, and I'll populate all of them. Um, so you'll be able to see any one of them, and you can populate it by the type too, projects to do while on a lunch break, um, something about astronomy, et cetera. Uh, on the training page, we've talked about before, and I'll talk about again, just to show you what this looks like. We've got our training modules uh, described here, and you can just click on them to get to each of them. And then at the bottom, for facilitators specifically, we have a way for you to facilitate these trainings as well. So you could download um, it as a PowerPoint or a PDF and share with the people you work with. And there is a, a facilitator guide for the foundations training as well. So lots of resources to just spread the word about citizen science and get people involved um, that you're interested in. Um, as for the badges, I put mine on my LinkedIn. I feel very cool about it. Um, and I have uh, also this learning about um, SciStarter badges to help me understand what to do with these badges. So when I click on here, it gives me a better understanding of what exactly the badge project does um, and how I can use it. And the FAQs are super duper useful. So we would recommend looking at that too. Also, it's a fun picture of a squirrel we just saw. Okay, excellent. And then last one <laughs> that we discussed, this was the education page. So it is split by grade level. Um, if you discover, too, that one of these projects that is not on here, but you've done it um, with a class or maybe with uh, you're a homeschool uh, teacher of some sort or you are working with um, students and you find them one that wasn't listed on here, feel free to give us a holler and we can um, look through how we can better um, support that as an education um, uh, project. So that was a lot of things. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the share again so we can go back. Okay. And Caroline already left. Thanks, Caroline. <laughs> um, Gonna get back to a farming project. I love it. Okay, amazing. Um, awesome. Okay, so we will move on to resources for our average citizen scientist. So whatever level you're at, this is for everyone who goes on as a volunteer. So um, just from the get-go, if you have an account on SciStarter, you have access to a lot of things. Before we get to that, um, we are going to go through a couple of our favorites, and then I'm actually going to pause to give you a mini tour of what the dashboard gives you. So we'll come back to that momentarily. Um, so on the dashboard, my personal favorite um, is the lists. So you can actually make lists as a volunteer just of things that interest you. So I, uh, because we're heading into Women's History Month tomorrow being the first of March, um, I really like finding the projects that uh, are focused on um, or not focused on necessarily, but are run by women scientists, so women in STEM. And so I got excited and went through and just found a bunch of projects that are um, that are led by women scientists. So you can make it in any way you want. You can add um, lists on the go. So when you go to a project, you're like, oh, this is super cool. I need to list. Um, I need to add it to a list so I remember it later for this specific topic. Um, you can do that from project pages and then see all of them on your on your dashboard, which is pretty nice. Um, examples of this are your literal favorites, a specific cause, or any uh, any projects that remind you of people. I have uh, teacher friends from back in the day that uh, were really interested in certain topics, and so I find myself like making lists of like, oh, I need to show this to so and so later, and so they're very useful. And then you can delete them if you decide you don't want to share them anymore <laughs> to your friend. Awesome. Okay, that is my favorite, and I was talking really fast, so we'll slow down and uh, Roland, if you'd like to talk about yours and how affiliates works well for. Uh, the volunteer side. Yes, sure. So the best things about uh, affiliates is that uh, they are a great way to quantify the amount of effort put into citizen science. Uh, whenever some uh, someone wants to participate in more than one project, and often they they can be in uh, on different platforms. SciStarter is the place where you can contribute and have everything listed in your dashboard, which Emma mentioned. Uh, so that's a screenshot from my dashboard since I part of my work with SciStarter is testing projects, which is why I have these numbers. And uh, there are really interesting projects. And uh, another cool feature about the affiliates is that when, even if the project isn't around anymore, you would still have your numbers and your stats right there. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the beautiful things about, about affiliates. 
And uh, any project can become an affiliate basically by linking their API with ours. Uh, and it's a one-time process to do it. Awesome. Yeah, um, I love having my dashboard. I, I'm thinking to myself, we should show your dashboard when we do the tour, if you're willing to share your screen instead, Roland, because yours are much more exciting to look at um, than mine. I have some, but not enough. So if we can see your um, your contributions, I'm curious how that'll um, differ from our uh, the others of us on the call. Um, awesome. All right, so Trevor, we are talking about the People Finder again, but this time, how does it help our volunteers? Yeah, People Finder is a, not just, uh, I know Caroline went uh, along with the facilitator side of People Finder, but I really enjoy using People Finder to connect with other citizen scientists in my area. Um, when I first started doing projects, I thought I was the only one. Um, and many of you out there may think the same thing that you may, you are the only citizen scientist in your area. Um, try out People Finder because I was pleasantly shocked that uh, there's over 250 people in my, uh, within an hour of my area. Um, this summer when things start warming up, my plan is to use this to connect with other scientists. So I'll just send out a blanket message um, saying, hey, I'm going to be at this library at this time. Um, if you want to meet up, let's meet up. We can do a project at the local library. Just sit down and discuss. Um, but it's, it's a great way for a citizen scientist to meet other citizen scientists. Or maybe you want to participate in a local project. It's a great way to find project leaders as well. So you can message those project leaders, find out what projects they are actually uh, leading um, and, and carrying out and see how you can participate in those projects. So, so it's a great uh, tool for not just facilitators, but also for the average citizen scientist. Excellent. Um, I love that example of uh, just sending a blanket message and saying, I'm going to be at this library or whatever to uh, work on this project and whatnot. I think that was the first piece, first piece of advice I got from Caroline, too, was the, you know, you should just go somewhere and go on People Finder and get people to meet up with you to talk citizen science. And it is a wonderful, a wonderful idea. So I'm I'm excited for you to try that out and when it gets warmer. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I tried it when we had the nice fake spring, we called it here, where it was warmer, but it was it was within a day. I was like, hey, tomorrow I'm doing this. So not a lot of time. Um, so I'm hoping when summer comes around and it actually does start warming up, I can do, uh, you know, a couple weeks in advance and and get get quite a few people to meet up. That's awesome. I'm excited. Take pictures. Oh, for sure. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we're going to pause here. See, I do not have nearly as many. Uh, Roland, would you be willing to share your dashboard to show us your contributions? We can do mine if you prefer, but I just realized I definitely should have asked. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah? it's still awesome. loading because there are so many projects. So yeah, we'll have to wait for a few more seconds. Okay, no worries. Can we can talk through a couple other things while we're waiting, actually. Um, and let me reshare my screen. Let me know when it's um, all set up. So just to scroll through a couple of other items before we go back to um, the dashboard. Uh, we have the citizensciencemonth.org, which I showed you the, uh, the forward slash resources page. There are also a ton of resources on there for you as a volunteer. So looking for events, especially, um, there's bound to be some, um, if not in your area online, there are a ton that we do, um, not just us, but the organizations that participate in citizen science will post them um, with us so that we can help promote them. So if you're ever looking for something to do, you're bored one day, the bored person on the internet concept sits, uh, is <laughs> is on your mind, uh, go over to SciStarter uh, or SusanScienceMonth.org, which will redirect you to SciStarter, and then you will be able to see all those events available to you. So um, that'll be uh, super easy to get to, and there's more being added every day as we get closer. Normally, we add this at the very end of the call, um, but I figured since we're talking about resources, we might as well talk about it earlier. So um, one of the or one of the many things that we do talk about here that we've already mentioned is the uh, project finder. So if you ever have interest in a specific topic, you can always just go to the project finder and send a quick message saying or uh, send a um, add in a word like penguins is always my example because I did that one day and found twelve different penguin uh, penguin different projects and it was just incredible to see that many. Um, the training is always uh, we've mentioned several times. 
Um, the project leaders and the community are both available to talk to you. So if you ever wanted to communicate with the project leaders, they're happy to answer questions about the project or give you guidance if you're stuck. Um, and the community can do that too. So writing like messages to report on, I really enjoyed this project or like, I enjoyed this project, but one of this part I got stuck on. Did anyone have any luck? That type of thing, the community is uh, happy to respond to. Uh, and then also you can always contact us at info at scistar.org, which uh, Caroline mentioned earlier with any questions about that. We do have a podcast um, that Bob Hershon, who's been on uh, Scistar Live before, uh, does uh, with us and then sends the uh, podcast to all the different places you can find your podcasts and um, they're available to you there. He will be on on occasion on live to talk live and he does take videos of the podcast so those are available on our YouTube channel as well. Okay those were those things. Uh, any luck Roland or are we pausing? Still loading. Okay that's okay. Um, let me actually I'll go ahead and share heck I'll share mine for the time. It's, it's ready. It's ready? Oh, awesome. Okay, you can go ahead and do that. And then after that, for any of our attendees, if you'd like to be able to speak and talk about what things you've uh, been most excited for on your dashboard or how you've used site start in the past, we'd love to hear it. So feel free to raise your hand while we're going through the dashboard items and then um, we'll we'll ask for your, your thoughts. Man, that's so many contributions. You're a superstar. <laughs> so what we're nice looking at, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, the cool thing is that on the dashboard, you can see all the projects you joined, uh, where, wherever you click participate or visit, it will get listed in your dashboard, whether it's an affiliate or not. And affiliates uh, will have the see my stats button next to them. So I'm going to try, let's go alphabetically to, let's say INET, where is it? INET list. So see my stats. Uh, and you can specify the time frame in the last 30 days, in the last month and a half, and since last year, 71. Uh, so basically, in the case of uh, iNaturalist, whenever I post some uh, observation, it will increase by one, uh, by one count. And uh, in the case of, uh, let's take Eterna as an example, so Eterna, same thing, and so on and so forth. And Eterna, for anyone who does not know, the contribution that Roland got uh, tagged for in this took how many hours, Roland? <laughs> this one is one well, more challenging. More than, more than 12, just to finish the interesting tutorials and the challenging puzzles. Yeah, it's but it's never. Project. Go ahead. It's not a boring game by any means. It's never boring, but it can get real challenging. Yeah. They do incredible things, and so they have to train you. And so when you get to your uh, to your contributions, that happens after your training is done, as far as I can tell. And so uh, when that happens, you've gone through 12 hours or so of work, which is incredible. Goop. <laughs> I love that project name. <laughs> Uh, what is your project that you've had the most contributions on, just from your memory? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm really not sure. 1,400 contributions, maybe uh, some of them are from various universe projects mm. because it's so easy and quick to just go in and classify th some images uh, or maybe Globe Observer. Let's see. So for clouds since 2022, 11 plus 8 plus 7 plus 13. Yeah, we'll have to go back uh, two years, not uh, not two years. Yeah, one year and a few months. Excellent. Yeah, cool. yeah, it's a lot, 1,400. How did they get that much? When you click on contributions, does it show you your, just the button for, yeah, okay, excellent. Yeah, I, I prefer looking at this one for mine because it makes me feel cooler having more visible to myself, <laughs> um, even though you can look at the individual stats, uh, but you can see just how often you participate in a section of time with all the projects, and it's um, really fun to see just like your most active time periods. Um, 
that you've worked on. And this is, it's really cool to see how many projects in like one month that you're, that you were working on. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, Trevor, are you getting close to beating 1400 contributions? No, no. Give, give me some time and maybe, maybe if Roland takes, you know, a month or two off and I just, yeah, <laughs> no, I think he has me beat by quite a bit, but one day Roland, I'll be, I'll be with you. I'll be up there. Excellent. <laughs> I'll start working on that as well. Trying to get up there. Awesome. Um, okay, great. Well, I'm going to pause this here. Did any of our, just optional if you'd like to, but if you would like to, I'm going to give you permission to speak if you um, unmute yourself and request it. Um, you don't have to, of course, but it is uh, permitted on your account now to do so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and swap it back to our slides. Um, where did it go? Well, just to clarify, they're permitted to, and then they would need to go take their mute off. Yes. They wanted to speak. Okay. Yeah. So you have permission now, but you still have to unmute yourself. I can't unmute for you, um, which is a good thing. <laughs> Wouldn't want to accidentally unmute when a dog is barking violently in the background or something. Um, awesome. But if there are any questions, you can drop them in the chat and we're here to discuss. And we have um, time if you have anything that you want to talk about or any of the uh, different resources that you'd like to look at. Um, mm -hmm. in the mean Amanda. Looks like Amanda has their mic off. Is that right? Uh, Am I misreading? Maybe I'm misreading that. I oh, think that's so your mute on. Sorry, didn't mean. <laughs> Don't listen. Called out, Amanda. No. <laughs> Sorry, Amanda. That's a good name. <laughs> Um, well, if they, if any of you do want to speak to any of these things or how you've used them in the past, feel free. If not, you're all good. You can hang out for a bit. Um, and in the meantime, for anyone who's listening in later for our, uh, our recordings or where we post this to help um, with future use of resources, we do have uh, SciStory Live every single week. So these are the upcoming events. We have Women's History Month coming up, as I mentioned, in March. And therefore, we're going to talk about the Girl Scouts at the very start. And then we'll be talking about spring because we'll be in uh, March and then April and it's getting uh, to be springtime, hopefully sooner. Or actually, I mean, the snow is great, but <laughs> I miss the warm weather already. So excited to have that. And if you ever need a reminder on what events are coming up, you can go to our blog um, on Cicer, or for Cicer Live, which is actually pinned. So if you go to our blog just in general, you'll always see that one first. So you can always get an update pretty quickly from using that. Okay there are any questions, let us know. Anything else you'd like to mention, any three of you? <laughs> I'll think of it as soon as we all hang up. Probably, <laughs> probably. I hear you there. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, in that case, I'll, I, we already talked through the, some of the uh, different uh, resources, so I did not put those back up here. So if there are any questions about the resources, I can back up it to you then, so you can see what they are. Uh, so in general, you have a million resources. We talked about a bunch of our favorites. If you ever have questions, you are more than welcome to reach out to us and we can help you get all that sorted. And in the meantime, we look forward to you working on all those lovely citizen science projects that make you excited to do citizen science. <laughs> so um, we'll go ahead and close out a bit early unless anyone has any thoughts. I think one of these uh, these types of events have a lot of resources. Sometimes it's, whoa, I need to digest. <laughs> need to process everything too. So um, once you start using all these things, you'll be like, wait, I should have asked. And then we will be there for you, I promise. Okay, great. All right, well then, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and enjoy um, the extra 17 minutes you can have back um, from your hour with us. Uh, if anyone on Facebook has a question, I did not see anything, but Roland, if there is anything, let me know. And then, um, yeah, have a wonderful rest of your week, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and end our Facebook stream and say goodbye to you all.